Hi, I'm Gus. Edith, Lulu, and Neelan. We're from Minnesota, USA. Join us in Cardinal Chito every Sunday on the Word Exposed on Jescom TV. Thank, Thank you, you and God, God bless. bless. Konnichiwa. Ako si Abin mula sa Japan. Ako po si Justine from Singapore. Samahan niyo kami at si Cardinal Chito Tagle tuwing linggo sa The Word Exposed sa Jescom TV. See you! 안녕하세요. 저는 한국에서 온 추준호 예레미야입니다. 제가 정말 좋아하는 우리 타글레 추기 형님과 함께하는 The World Exposed에 여러분 모두를 초대합니다. Thank you. Friends, greetings of joy and peace. I trust that you are well. Please continue exposing the word with us every Sunday. Subscribe to Jazzcom TV, then watch and share the word exposed on your feed. Thank you. Ciao, mabuhay! You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. We are on the second Sunday of Advent. We are halfway through our preparation for Christmas. How has your Advent been so far? We hope we are devoting adequate time and space for spiritual preparation. Today's Gospel teaches us a good way to spiritually prepare for Christmas. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, was the exhortation of John the Baptist. John preached the coming of the Messiah and prepared the way for Jesus during their time. This is the same exhortation directed to us today. Through repentance of our sins and reforming our lives, we could help in the blossoming of the Lord's kingdom of peace and justice. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide, but he shall judge the poor with justice and decide aright for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the young lion shall browse together with a little child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors. Together their young shall rest. The lion shall eat hay like the ox. The baby shall play by the cobra's den, and the child lay his hand on the adder's lair. There shall be no harm or ruin on all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be filled with knowledge of the Lord, as water covers the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse, set up as a signal for the nations, the Gentiles shall seek out, for his dwelling shall be glorious. The Word of the Lord. Just as 
flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever oh god with your judgment and thou the king and with your The King's Son, He shall govern your people with justice. And your afflicted ones with judgment, justice shall flourish in His time. And fullness of peace forever. Justice shall flower in his days and profound peace till the moon. flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever for he shall rescue the poor when he cries out and the afflicted in his time and fullness of peace forever.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, whatever was written previously was written for our instruction, that by endurance and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to think in harmony with one another in keeping with Christ Jesus that with one accord you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another then, as Christ welcomed you for the glory of God. For I say that Christ became a minister of the circumcised to show God's truthfulness, to confirm the promises to the patriarchs, but so that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. The Word of the Lord. A bud shall blossom. What a beautiful image, which we borrow from the first reading from Isaiah. A bud shall blossom. It captures for us one important element of our hope and anticipation during Advent, the blossoming of a bud. In the first reading, Isaiah uses this image, a stump from Jesse, and from its root, a bud shall blossom. This is good news to a people who have suffered from a corrupt kingdom, a corrupt and uh, decaying kingship. They were looking forward to the blossoming of something new. And this is promised by God through the prophet Isaiah. At the center of the promise was the budding forth and the blossoming of a reign of justice. Justice that will lead to peace where adversaries could come together having recovered justice and they can now live in peace. Even nature, which is often considered a threat to humanity, now with just relationships will be the best friend of human beings. The bud of justice shall blossom. This is God's promise. This is God's action. Aha! This is God's action. Justice will not blossom by itself. We need agents of justice. In this case, God. But God will raise a king. A king. And for this king to be the agent of the budding and the blossoming of justice, this king will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, without the divine spirit, no king could usher in a reign of justice. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of gentleness, the spirit of righteousness, the spirit of love, you may name all the fruits of the Spirit and put them in the mind and heart of a king or of a person. That person would help in the budding forth and the blossoming of justice. In our time, we need this. And we pray in our present Advent that more people may be filled with the Spirit so that more people could work with God in the budding forth and the blossoming of the reign of justice. In the second reading, St. Paul talks about the budding forth of one element of life 
justice, yes, according to Isaiah, and here, mutual acceptance. Being patient with one another. Not destroying each other. Not complaining against each other. But finding in each other someone whom I can consider a brother, a sister, a neighbor. Someone whom I will accept. And how will this blossom in us? This reign of respect and mutual acceptance. Mutual appreciation in our differences and in our diversity, according to St. Paul. Just see for yourself how God has accepted you in Jesus. God has been patient with all of us. God has been understanding <laughs> towards all of us. And if we have benefited from the mercy and understanding of God, then do the same. Let acceptance, patience towards others Blossom. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Matthew John the Baptist appeared, preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. At that time, Jerusalem, all Judea, and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath, produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now, the axe lies at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I am baptizing you with water for repentance. But the one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord A bud shall blossom, a beautiful image for our Advent hope and anticipation. And a bud, you know, it starts slowly coming from the roots and then blossoming. In the first reading from the prophet Isaiah, we see the promise of God that a reign of justice will finally blossom. This is God's action. And we need, or God will raise a king who will assist God's action in the blossoming of justice. But this king, to be an agent of justice, will be filled first with the spirit, the spirit of wisdom, of understanding, of fear of the Lord. So if we want, especially in our time, the blossoming of justice, we need not just kings, but people who will be open to the spirit, the spirit of wisdom and fear of the Lord and understanding so that we can assist God in the blossoming of justice. In the second reading, St. Paul talks about a need in our time. We need the blossoming of mutual acceptance, 
of respect towards neighbors. And how will that happen? If we remember how God has accepted us in Jesus. When we forget the patience of God towards us, when we forget how God has encouraged us, when we forget how God has accepted us in Jesus, then we are not equipped to accept others. And look at what's happening in the world. Mutual destruction, mutual uh, manipulation. But uh, So we need the blossoming of courtesy, respect. But that will happen only if we accept God's patience with us. In the gospel, the figure of John the Baptist is at the center here. The forerunner, the one who was sent by God to be the voice in the wilderness to proclaim the coming of someone who is greater than he is. And his role is to prepare the path for the Messiah. Here, John the Baptist points to one important aspect. How could we prepare for the coming of the Lord? How could we uh, assist in the blossoming of this kingdom of the Messiah? Our role, first of all, is to reform our lives. That's the message of John the Baptist. Examine your lives. Do not be proud. And he addressed the Pharisees and the Sadducees, who had a lot of good things running for them, going for them. They have talents. They have have had education, competence, but also, just like other people, tempted to be self-righteous. And this self-righteousness led them or tempted them to look down on others. But John the Baptist reminded them, you also need to reform your lives. Be honest. Don't be self-righteous, pointing your fingers at others as though others are always wrong and you are always right. No, reform your lives. But who can reform their lives? Only those who have examined their lives and have admitted we have had faults. And this humility hopefully will lead to a resolve to reform our lives. But reforming our lives must have a norm, a criterion. Reforming towards what? No, change could be for the better or for the worse. And we hope reform is for the better. And St. John the Baptist points to us the norm. Reform our lives so that our lives will be in harmony with the one who is to come, Jesus. So the blossoming that we are asked to engage in is to be in harmony with Jesus. This is a good time you know, to review our lives, see what is not in consonance with Jesus' teachings, his person, his manner of relating, and humbly admit, this is where I need to reform. And the norm is always Jesus. And with that, what will blossom? Jesus in us. And we will blossom as the image of Jesus. This is our Advent hope. A bud shall blossom. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. We will celebrate the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of Mary on December the 8th. What can we learn from Mary in the context of Advent? 
we can highlight two lessons. First, let us direct our attention to the angel's annunciation. Gabriel announced and explained to Mary that she will bear God's Son. But as Pope Francis pointed out, it was not contemporaneously announced and explained to others, which caused some problems. For example, Joseph, a just man observing God's law, decided to divorce her quietly, for he did not know that the child she was carrying was God's son. But through it all, Mary kept her faith in God. The Pope teaches us, Friends, do we place our trust in God even if things do not go according to our plans? What Mary showed us in continuously keeping her faith in God is the good that we can get from patiently waiting. She waited for God to act on His Word and carry out His plan. And we know that God did not disappoint her. If we go back to Joseph's dilemma, we read in the Gospel that it was God Himself through the angel who intervened so Joseph would take Mary as his wife. The example has a domestic character. The relationship between husband and wife must be based on trust in God and must be renewed every day. So like Mary, every day we must tell the Lord, yes, here I am. This brings us to the other lesson. Mary's Declaration of Faith and Availability. Pope Francis says, We saw this when Mary hastened to visit and assist her elderly kinswoman Elizabeth, who was with child, John the Baptist. This Advent, let us pray for the grace to be like Mary, who trusted God every day and whose availability to God moved her to become likewise available to others, especially to those in need. Following Our Lady's footsteps is surely a good way to prepare for Christmas. O Mary Immaculate, pray for us. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, what contemporary attitudes and lifestyles prevent God's salvation from blossoming? Anong mga kaugalian at estilo ng buhay ang hindi nagbibigay ng paglago sa pagliligtas ng Diyos? The second point is, what aspects of your life need reform to be in harmony with Jesus? Anong mga aspeto ng iyong buhay ang nangangailangan ng pagbabago para maitugma kay Jesus? Heavenly Father, You have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as Your Word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity 
in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed.